Hello everyone, this is Yuqi Chen from China University of Geosciences. Sciences. Um, here is my presentation on China's uh, Chang'e 5 landing site for this year's EG, EGU General Assemblage. Here I also want to thank my co-authors from Brown University, Minster University, and Lancet University. Without their help, uh, all this work cannot be done. What is Chang'e 5 mission? Chang'e 5 mission is China's first lunar sample return mission, and it is the Chang'e 5 spacecraft is composed of four components, including a sender, a lander, a returner, and an orbiter. The lander landed on the lunar surface with several scientific payloads. Um, as you know, Chang'e 5 mission is, uh, is a lunar sample return mission, so compared with Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4, Actually, there are not many scientific payloads on board the Chang'e 5 lander. The major aim of the Chang'e 5 lander or the Chang'e 5 spacecraft is to collect uh, is to collect lunar samples back. And um, there are also several uh, inside observations from uh, the scientific pay payloads on board the lander to help uh, the sample interpretations in the lab. We can see from the left. Uh, the right image of the Chang'e 5 lander, there, uh, there were a sampler A and a sampler B. Sampler A and a sampler B are uh, used to scoop the lunar surface samples, and in total, like there are around 1.5 kilograms of um, uh, samples were taken by the sampler A and a sampler B, including some bracha with a diameter of 1 to 2 uh, micro, sorry, millimeters. And there is also the Chang'e 5 also has a drill. Uh, the drill was used to drill down to the uh, drill down the regolith, and in total, uh, there are around one meter of um, one meter of uh, core samples was uh, collected by the drill with uh, a mass of around 250 grams. And and uh, and uh, there are actually not many scientific pillows on board the uh, Chang'e 5 lander, and the two of them you can see from this image are the lunar penetrator radar. The lunar penetrator radar um, actually is a um, preliminary, preliminary used for help the uh, sampling decisions because the lunar penetrator radar can, can tell you the subsurface sculptures under the Chang'e 5 lander. It can tell you um, are there any rocks, uh, are there any rocks are not suitable for drilling like this, so the lunar penetrator radar. But lunar penetrator radar also has some technical meanings, which I will talk about later. And there is another scientific payload on board the Chang'e 5 lander, which is lunar meteorological spectrometer. And this spectrometer uh, was used to detect the spectra of the uh, landing site, and uh, all the um, penetrator radar data and the spectral data can link the laboratory analysis of the samples and to the inside landing site together to help uh, sample interpretations. So this is a Chang'e 5 mission and a Chang'e 5 spacecraft. Let's go to the Chang'e 5 landing site. Actually, this work, w w um, w we started to this work as early as um, 2016 from our study on Mount Remoka. You can see from uh, the this uh, global image, the Chang'e 5 landing site uh, is on um, is to the uh, west of Marion Brim and in the north of Oceanus Pocularum. This uh, is a very special place on the main ways because uh, the Chang'e 5 landing site is within the Pocularum KIP terrain. This, so this is a landing site location. Let's go a um, more Go, go, go more details of the Chang'e 5 landing site. Uh, this is the Chang'e 5 landing site uh, TC morning map image. And uh, as you can see from here, uh, the, the white um, box is uh, the preliminary selected Chang'e 5 landing region. And the Chang'e 5 um, finally landed um, in the south of this uh, white box um, in this um, in a mirror plane. You can see from uh, this image that um, this um, Chang'e 5 landing region is uh, is composed of several key uh, volcanic features. You can see here the majority of the this region was covered by volcanic plains, 
and, uh, and uh, the volcanic plains was composed of mare resorts, and there are some wrinkle ridges developed on the on those um, mare resorts. And you can also see some uh, volcanic domes in this region. For example, Mount Sorimoka. Mount Sorimoka was composed of um, 20, uh, over 20 volcanic domes, and uh, all these volcanic domes make this uh, volcanic complex, which is one of the three largest volcanic complex on the moon. And there are also other volcanic domes. Um, the Mount Sorimoka is a basaltic volcanic dome, volcanic complex, but to the west, to the east of Chang Fai Landing site, landing region, there are marine domes. The marine domes are silica rich volcanic domes. They are composed of um, silica or ferrocyte um, materials, and it, it's a kind of involved volcanism. And except for mirror planes, uh, domes, they are the, um, the most uh, um, permanent feature here is, you can see here this linear feature. Uh, this linear feature, its name is a Rima Sharp. Rima Sharp, according to previous studies, is the longest sooner story on the moon. As we know, uh, Sooner Suez was um, produced by, uh, ext by extensive eruption of uh, lavas, so we, we, we would want to know, do uh, Rima Sharp uh, produce or bring any lavas to this region or not? So, in, uh, in general, generally speaking, the Chang'e 5 landing site is an ideal place to study lunar volcanism. This region has different kinds of uh, different kinds of volcanic features and diff different compositions of um, volcanic uh, deposits. So let's go um, go more um, go to more close to the Chang'e 5 landing site, landing site itself. This is LLC web image you can see here from you can see here the Chang'e 5 landing site is just just 50 meters to a Rima shop, which is very close. And if you see this next image, you will see Chang Five, the Chang Five Lander is like two or three hundred meters to uh, uh, several hundred meters to this um, uh, impact crater. So we will assume like that the Chang Five mission maybe sample some ejecta of this crater. The Chang'e 5 landing site, its, uh, uh, its location, its coordinates is 43.06 and in north and 51.92 uh, in west. Th this uh, coordinates was um, calculated by uh, Wang et al. in remote sensing uh, based on image-based coordinates and radio checking. So, um, although they have the, uh, there is some uncertainties, but we can. Uh, we can see that the Chang'e 5 landed in 43.06 in north and 51.02 in west. So this is the Chang'e 5 landing site. So what's, uh, we just go through the Chang'e 5 landing site, uh, its location and the Chang'e 5 mission components. Now we want to know uh, how, how is this region in a global context. So um, before that, we need to know um, what is Pakalaran KIP terrain? That is because Chang'e 5 landed in the northwest of uh, Pakalaran KIP terrain. This terrain was um, char characterized by heat producing elements like uranium, uranium, um, potassium, thorium. Uh, all these elements are incompatible elements and they are also heat producing elements. So uh, this uh, Pakalaran KIP terrain will have a high heat flux and the mantle may be remain hot for, for a very long time. So uh, we, we will see some like young volcanism in this region. Let's say uh, the, uh, the Hissinger et al. Uh, global, lunar global uh, mayor basalt age map, we will see that the Chang 5 landing region is, uh, the, Chang 5, the unit that Chang 5 landed is a very young, it is nearly the youngest mayor Source on the moon. It has an age of 1.2 giga year, sorry, 1.3 giga year according to his Adol's work. And the Pakalar and Kiap terrain is a region um, with lots of uh, volcanic mere mechanism and uh, especially some young mere mechanism. 
as you know, the Chang'e 5 landed in uh, some of the young, youngest mirror vessels uh, within Pakalari Kiap's terrain. How is this kind of young uh, mirror vessels globally on the moon? Here is several uh, images. This is a titanium image. This is thorium image. This uh, this kind of high, sorry, this kind of young um, mirror resource within the Pakaran capital terrain has relative high uh, titanium abundance and with evaluated um, olivine abundance and it also has high it also has high thorium abundance so it is a kind of special um, special mirror resource on the mirror so let's go um, go more um, close to the Chang 5 landing site. Here is the unit um, where Chang 5 landed. We call this unit EM4 or P58. Uh, P50, EM4 is from our work uh, in 1918, and P58 is from Hissinger et al.'s work in 2023 20, and 2011. So we combine these two works together, and we usually call this unit EM4 P58. Uh, actually, um, EM4 and P50 ha has some um, small difference, but um, uh, we think that uh, you, this name is uh, appropriate to uh, to call this region, to call this marionette. So Chang5 uh, landed nearly in the center of uh, EM4 P58, and EM4 P P58, um, as I said, uh, it is one of the youngest marionettes on the moon. How is this young unit looks like? So let's first uh, see its compositions. The EM4 P50 unit, first of all, is a is a intermediate, a kind of in intermediate mid source. Uh, you can see from you can see from the uh, um, from the titanium map or the first color map. The first color map, uh, the blue blue colors, blue hues means uh, relative high. Titanium abundance, and if you see directly the titanium abundance map, you will see that the uh, EM4 P58 unit has a relative high titanium abundance. And based on our uh, stat, based on our statistics, we found that the EM4 P58 unit uh, is a kind of intermediate to high titanium unit. And uh, except for the uh, titanium abundance, what other elements? Elements, elemental composition do we have? We have uh, the iron composition. This region is um, a kind of high iron rich mirror resource. So combine the iron and the titanium together, we will know uh, this region may be high, have a high um, composition, high abundance of ammonite. And we also have other uh, element abundance like the aluminum, calcium, and um, we will see that the Chang 5 EM4 P50 region is has low abundance of uh, aluminium and uh, calcium. That is because the mirror unit was depleted in plagiarism clays and depleted in plagiarism clays. And we will also see that an EM4 P50 unit has a high abundance of uh, not only iron but also magnesium. That is because we think that. Um, the mafic minerals are, are abundant in uh, in mineral resource. So this is the elemental composition of EM4 P50 unit. What other composition data we have? We have thorium abundance um, from lunar perspective of this region, and um, based on the lunar perspective, thorium abundance or other like uranium. Potassium abundance map will see that this region are evaluated in thorium abundance. Uh, for most of lunar mineral sources, they have thorium abundance uh, smaller than 2 ppm, but for the Chang 5 uh, EM4 P50 unit, this unit has thorium abundance, like the average thorium abundance is like 3.5 ppm. So this region has the EM4 P58 unit has uh, evaluated thorium abundance. Then why we want to know why? There are two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is an inherent hypothesis. Um, 
this, hy uh, this uh, hypothesis tell you the thorium are inherent to the main resource, no matter from assimilation of high thorium materials where magma rises or abnormal concentration of thorium in the mantle sources. And we have uh, several examples of inherent um, basaltic fragments of Apollo sample catalog. And another one is extraneous uh, arrange. This hypothesis, uh, generally speaking, tell you the thorium here is in, uh, is foreign to the main resource itself, and it may be come from the contamination of high crystal materials by vertical and lateral mixing. That means the main resource itself are not in here evaluated in thorium, but the later mixing like uh, marine like like several impacts will deliver the high thorium materials to the regolith and and the regolith um, is evaluated maybe evaluated in thorium but the may have thought the basement rock are not so there are two hypotheses um, for the thorium issues uh, if the thorium extraneous where do they come from and uh, if the thorium is extraneous, what is the thermal sources of young mirror source? This is some questions that may be answered by channel 5 samples, and it is one of the scientific meanings of the channel 5 samples. So uh, we, we we have a take a look at, at the thorium abundance of channel 5 samples. Let's go to the mineralogy. The mineralogy of the channel 5 young mirror samples. Um, this work was done by our uh, 2018 uh, started from our 2018 uh, work, uh, we uh, excavated some uh, several fresh craters in this region, and uh, according to their spatula, we found that the eastern mare, which is uh, which is the EM4 P58, the west mare is to the uh, west of Chang 5 landing site, so we will not talk about it today. But the eastern mare is where Chang 5 uh, landed. It has uh, two absorption uh, features close to 1 microns and 2.2 microns, these two um, absorption features will tell, tell told you uh, the EM4 P58 region is has uh, uh, the plagiarism clays that is the dominant mineral and uh, the clinal paroxysm is more abundant than other paroxysm, but we don't see any uh, direct evidence of, ol of olivine. But actually, b according to other researchers' work, like State Adults' work, they find that the young Mary basalts in the center of PKT has evaluated olivine abundance. In their IBD color composition map, the uh, the unit where Chang 5 landing is very red, and the red means um, a deeper one micron absorption, which means um, which means high abundance of olivine, but we don't see any olivine based on our spatula with the reason. And another work by John Addo also tell you that uh, there may be more, uh, the olivine may be evaluated. There may be many olivine in the, uh, in the unit where, where Chang 5 landed, but we don't see uh, abundant olivine in the Chang 5, in the region where Chang 5 landed. So we want to ask, uh, does EM4 P58 have, have a high abundance of olivine or not? So we examined uh, like 400, sorry, 510 um, spatula from small fresh craters. That is because small fresh craters can, um, uh, it's better to, um, to rule out uh, to some extent, the inference of a space weathering, and according to our four five hundred and ten spatula of uh, the fresh craters in the EM4 P58 unit, we still find that the uh, two dominant absorption features are one micro and two point two micro. Uh, Clinal pyrazine is a dominant mafic mineral, and there are no clear evidence of olivine. And we also did based on the two. Uh, 510 spatula, we use a uh, modified Gaussian model to calculate the uh, relative abundance of uh, clinopyrazine, autopyrazine, and olivine, assuming uh, CPX plus OPX plus OLV equals to 100. And according to our calculation, 
uh, based on modifying Gaussian model, we find that all the wine abundance is just 21%, which means which is lower than clinopyroxene and um, orthopyroxene, which means all the wine is not that rich in the Chang 5 region. The uh, Chang 5 uh, landing unit and this results is not uh, the same as standard at all results, and we are very confident that the Chang 5 unit are not very rich in olive oil, but maybe the olive oil is evaluated, uh, relative evaluated than other mere units. And another thing, um, we, we just talk about the composition, the mineralogy, and another thing of one unit is chronology. Uh, one, another important thing we want to know is the chronology of, that, of this unit. And we can see here from uh, two composition maps, there are some um, composition variations within this unit. But um, generally speaking, this unit are homogeneous in general, but there are some uh, composition variations. Most of these composition variations are related to impact mixing, like you can see here this crater, this crater, they exhibit the underlying materials and produce some. Um, some composition, compositional rays, but except for those um, which may influenced by impact mixing, what other regions um, uh, like like uh, what what other um, composition difference means? Like here, this region it has a evaluated relative high titanium and iron abundance. What does this means? Is it a separate unit, or is the geochemical evolution in one flow? or these separate flaws, uh, we don't know. So the most uh, direct way is to, to, uh, to constrain the edges of all this region to say if there are any separate flaws uh, in this region. So we did uh, some great mapping of the EM4P58 unit. We, uh, counting, we have counted craters with all the um, EM4P58 unit um, with one degree by one degree grade. grade. Well, according to our grade, um, grade counting, we found that uh, the EM4P58 unit has some age variations. The youngest, um, the youngest location, the youngest mirror source within EM4P58 is located in the northwest, northeast, and south of EM4P58. And if we uh, take all craters, uh, if we um, uh, take all craters into consideration together, we will get an average uh, age of this unit of all these grades is 1.53 giga year. And um, we will see that the different authors uh, get a different ages of EM4P58 unit. And we um, plotted different orders created counting regions, and we found that uh, different orders created counting age created counting regions are a little bit different. And um, some authors like Chen Edo, um, 2018, get a very young age, 1.21 uh, giga year. That is because maybe he counted region very young um, in our grid map, so he will he get he got a young age. The chain adults um, critical region is here, the blue box, and here it is in our green map, it is young. And um, his figure adults uh, will get an age of 1.3. And if you see his critical uh, region, the the uh, green box here, you, you, you will see that uh, um, his figure adults critical age are also young in our uh, green map. So maybe, um, although different others get different ages, uh, maybe the reason is that they count in different regions, and these different regions actually have different ages, different career counting ages, with some reason. We also counted the uh, Chang 5 landing site. We counted uh, three separate units uh, surrounding the Chang 5 landing site, and the red triangle here the Chang 5 landing site, the blue the green triangle here the Chang 5 landing site. We counted three separate five separate units surrounding 
on the Chang Five Latin site. And um, when we selected the country regions, we uh, excluding all the uh, all the rails and the secondary all the rails and the secondary trains. According to our counting of the Chang Five Landing site, we found that the Chang Five Landing site maybe have an age of around 1.6 to 1.7 giga year. And this age is very similar to our counting work, uh, of our great counting work. So I just uh, said that um, the Chang Five Landing unit EM4P58 yeah, have some uh, age variations. Then why this unit will have some age variations? Why the northwest, northeast, and the south of this region has some ex uh, has some relative young age compared with the majority of uh, the EM4P58? And not only us find uh, there are age variations of EM4P58, Garrick at all also find that uh, the Changfa Landing region has. Uh, some age variations, and uh, this is his histogram. This is our um, credit counting results. Both of us find that there are age variations within the EM4P58 unit. Why? The first explanation is there are actually uh, different eruption. There are different eruptions of this region. The um, the one example is to the south of uh, Aristotle's Plateau, the P60 unit. It has um, uh, starter man counted craters from of, of this unit, and uh, he she found that from the west to the east of P58 unit, the ages are changing. Were changing. The west of uh, P68 unit are younger than the uh, east of P58 unit. So she think that this there may be some um, different eruption in this region. So for our Chang Five Landing region, this may be also true that there may be different eruptions of EM4 P58 unit. Another um, possibility is that according to the work by Pascal of Far Side of Candidism, he found that he counted uh, every grade, many grades for one small unit, and he found that for all these grades, there are also age variations. But he thinks that uh, the, all these three ages may be controlled by the local geology. So for our channel five line site, maybe uh, some credit counting, maybe some ages uh, are also controlled by the local geology. So two possibilities here: the separate eruption, separate eruptions, local ge uh, or um, every three age controlled by local geologies, or both of them. Let's then go to the stratigraphic work we did. Why why we did some stratigraphic work? That is because the Channel Five was installed a penetrator radar. The penetrator radar are preliminary used to um, detect the subsurface sculptures under the lander to help um, sampling to help drilling um, decisions. But the lunar penetrator radar not only have not only has scientific Engineering meanings. It also has scientific meanings. Uh, we saw many of work by Rune Panjin Wida on the moon from Chang 3 and Chang 4. And for the Chang 5 mission, the Panjin Wida may also tell us a lot of the surface of his sculptures of the landing site. And so we uh, did some stratigraphic work and we constructed the, um, uh, generally speaking, the uh, geological column of the Northern Ocean Asphalarum and of the landing site itself. According to our um, work, we think that the uh, Chang Five landing site or the Northern Ocean Ice Paragraph are mainly uh, the subsurface, subsurface sculptures are mainly composed of three, uh, three separate layers. The first one, two, three, four, four separate layers. The first layer is regolith and ejecta. Uh, the regolith and ejecta are, are mixed with each other nearly totally. Um, and then the second layer, the second layer is the intermediate titanium mirror basalts. And the thickness of this um, intermediate titanium mirror basalts, uh, its thickness was constrained by um, great excavation technique. And at the bottom of uh, this geology column, there is 
there is embryo aged marabou cells because um, the they are age um, the age difference between the embryo aged marabou cells and the eratosthenia aged marabou cells are large. So we assume we guess there there are like 10 meter uh, palau regulus and the delta between the embryo aged aged marabou cells and the intermediate eratosthenia aged marabou cells. So this is a stratigraphic work. Then uh, we reconstructed the uh, geological evolution history of this region based on all our previous works. We think that the Imbrium impact uh, happened 3.93 years ago, generally a ring, a very complex ring uh, system, multi ring system uh, in the northern Shunas Pangalaram. And, uh, the, uh, and the, uh, some high, highland materials like the ITH unit are actually. Uh, uh, from the uh, ring system of, of mirror in rain. And then iridium in part uh, generated a linear terrain in the north of Mount Mosramoka. And then comes to the silica eruptions around 3.75 to or 3.35 giga years ago. It's contemporary or earlier than uh, the than embryo the mirror results. Then come comes to the majority, the most. Uh, uh, then comes to the uh, eruption of basaltic volcanic that amongst Rimoka formed I I one I R two and I R three. Then come uh, to the major so major phase uh, basaltic eruption in this region from the I M one I M two and I M three. We think that um, because the composition similarity and the composition mineralogy similarity, we think that uh, the Mount Rimoka and the low titanium embryo may source maybe have a common uh, magma, magma source. And then uh, the embryo aged may resource are formed after the embryo aged may resource were formed. Uh, the pillar cross crater maybe delivers some ejecta to this region, uh, forms some plow ejecta. And of course, uh, the um, embryo aged may resource were covered by your titanium may resource. And, and the embryo aged may results have an age difference like 1.0 giga year to the eratosthenia aged may results. We think that there are plow ejecta regulates between the embryo aged may results and uh, the eratosthenia aged may results. Pedal class creator is one of them. And then um, comes to the uh, youngest mere mechanism in this region from the EM1, EM2, EM3, and EM4. Uh, the Chang Five mission landed in EM4. And then after all the mirror uh, units formed, um, but the impact mixing continues uh, and a little transportation of uh, ejecta continues. So we think that uh, three uh, impact craters may deliver the most uh, majority of ejecta to this region. They are Aristotle, sorry, they are Hapalas, Aristotle's and Copernicus. Besides all this um, process, the Winkle Ridge tectonic deformation happens all the time, not only before the um, onset of embryo mirror results, but also happen the Winkle Ridge deformation, but also happen after the onset, after the eruption of uh, Eratosthenia aged mirror results. So this is the geological history of uh, the unit. We also want to know uh, the scientific scientific meaning of uh, the Chang Five samples. So in our work, we sorry. So in our early work, we summarized twenty seven scientific meanings of the Chang Five uh, samples, and I want to highlight several of them. Uh, the first one is uh, Chang Five samples are very young. Uh, as we know, uh, samples younger than 2.7, 2.8 giga years are never sampled previously. So, if we, um, if the Chang'e samples are really young, is it will represent a young volcanism on the moon and tell us a lot about how young volcanism, uh, geochemically, geophysically, looks like. Another meaning is because the Chang'e samples are very young. It can be used to constrain the lunar college function. 
this is a lunar quadrant function. The lunar quadrant function is constrained well uh, for for the uh, for the age the range uh, before three, older than three giga year and younger than one giga year. But there are not many constraint points between. There are not there are no constraint points between one to three giga year. The other chamfer samples was confirmed have an age um have an age of like one giga year to two giga year can definitely put some points here. Another scientific meaning is because chamfer samples are young is um to constrain the lunar magnetic field and choose time. Um, the reason is the same as lunar culture function. We don't have many points between one to three giga year to constrain the uh, decline of lunar magnetic field. And the lunar magnetic field, uh, as you know, is can reflect the internal state of the moon. So, um, for me, I think the lunar, um, for me, I, I think the chunk five samples are very important to constrain the and choose time of lunar dynamo and can tell us a lot of the internal state and maybe the um, the mecha mechanism of lunar dynamo. Another uh, scientific significance is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the distal impacts may be delivered uh, distal materials to the Chang'e 5 landing region. And we think that um, for the Chang'e 5 landing site, the Hapalas, Copernicus, and Aristotle's maybe contribute the most uh, digital materials based on our mapping and calculation. Now, those digital materials can not only tell us uh, the uh, maybe the subsurface composition of the digital impact location, but also can be used to constrain uh, the lunar college function. Uh, the uh, scientific mini the digital materials also um, have other compositions, like they maybe also contain some hardline and silica materials delivered by impacts close to uh, the landing site, maybe from Mount Jura, this um, or from the marine domes. If those samples are collected by Chang Five, we maybe can know better uh, the imbrium or iridium uh, impact ages and maybe the petrogenesis of. Um, one and a member of lunar mechanism, the silica mechanism. The last scientific meaning I want to highlight is the deep mantle properties. As you know, as the moon cools down, the um, magma source region become deeper and deeper because the Chang'e 5 samples may be very young. So we are thinking that the Chang'e 5 samples uh, may be from uh, the deep mantle sources after the ammonite overturning lunar magma ocean. Because we never have such a young samples with a high titanium uh, abundance, with a relative high titanium abundance, these samples maybe tell us a lot of magma ocean, especially the M9 overturn. Uh, another scientific meaning is I already said that uh, the thorium enrichment mechanism in the mirror source in the Chang'e 5 uh, landing region, the EM4P58 unit is extraneous or inherent to the mirror resource. If it is inherent, we present some assimilation or uh, abnormal concentration of thorium in the mantle source regions. If it is extraneous, oh, if it is extraneous, it is possible because we see many impact craters examine high thorium uh, materials underneath. Then we need to answer how where is the um, heat come from for the yummy air resource. If it is does if the uh, source region doesn't has a high uh, thorium abundance. So I think that's the all uh, several scientific meanings I want to highlight. And finally, thanks for your attention. Uh, I find uh, I spend like 40 minutes on this presentation. If you have any specific questions for me, please um, um, contact me through my email, through my Twitter, or or just um, leave some message in EG General Assemblage on the meeting uh, meeting website. So uh, finally, I want to see at the at at the time of 
I'm recording this video, um, there are 18 samples, the information of 18 samples has been released in the Lunar Sample Information Database and open for application of Chinese investigators. And uh, according to my knowledge, uh, the, uh, the Chang5 samples will also be available to our international uh, co cooperators uh, in the future. So very exciting moment. Uh, the Chang5 sample samples will tell us a lot. That's my presentation. Thanks for your attention.